All right, so today is automating, or not automating, but it's dealing with the ribbon. So it turns out that when, uh, in 2007, when Microsoft said, we're changing the whole way Excel looks, we're putting a ribbon interface, they said, you know, we want you to be able to modify the ribbon too, to be the developers to be able to put new tabs on and put new buttons on the tabs in the ribbon and so forth. Uh, it t and it turns out that before this, there was a menu structure in Excel. How many of you learned Excel before the ribbon? Just a few of you. Now, this is getting to be pretty old stuff. Um, back in the days of the menu, we could modify the menu with VBA on the fly. We could just say, add a new menu, put some choices on the menu, and when the user clicks on this, do this. When they put the ribbon in, they said, we're not going to let you manipulate it in that way, like from the ground up with VBA. Once we've got some things on there, there's some things we can do with VBA, but like, like just adding a new tab from the ribbon is not something we do with VBA. Uh, it is something that we do through XML. So XML is extensible markup language. And this is, this is where our life gets a little bit weird. Um, so let's actually, I'm going to download one of the early assignments from the course. I'm going to download the Fallen Angel. Yeah, the Fallen Angel assignment would be a pretty good one to do. So let me go to my educator. If you, have the if you have any version of the Fallen Angel assignment on your computer, you can work with that one. Um, I, I don't think I do. So let me go ahead and pull that down. Manage, assessments. Am I in the right class? 1206N, that looks like the right class. Fall 2018. Oh, here we go. All right, here's the Fallen Angel assignment, and I will... Download that. There we go. Fallen Angel. And I think I think I'm going to put that in a newly created folder, just so because we're going to work with some other files here. And so having having a folder that's it doesn't have a whole lot of other junk in it will be helpful here. All right. Now, I'm not even going to open this yet. I'm just going to go show this in the folder. Here's the, f the first thing that is, is strange and yet somehow wonderful. Um, actually, I am going to open it. Um, you don't need to open it. Just, you, can, you can just kind of watch this first part. So I'm going to open this workbook, and there should be some data in it. I just want to make sure we got what we see. Okay, so we've got something like here, stock. I want to put a couple of numbers in here. So in A1, I'm just going to put the number 10. Enable editing. Enable macros. We will have, we'll see these, these strings here. All right, I'm going to save and close. Got a sheet called Fallen Angel. It's probably the first sheet. Now, before 2007, the Excel workbook format was just kind of some proprietary format that Microsoft said, oh, you know, we've got to keep track of a worksheet. And for the past couple of decades, they've been, you know, oh, we've got some new feature for Excel. Let's figure out how to, how to save that. We've got to figure out how to save it. And the, the file format was really a mess. And so in 2007, they said, let's wipe the slate clean and let's start from scratch. Something that's going to be a little more expandable and a little more standard. And in fact, they published the specification, which was really kind of amazing for Microsoft. Um, and so what the format is, is it's this. Now, I want you to listen, to pay attention, because this one I'm about to say is like foundational for what we're doing for the rest of the class today. It's, and it's bizarre. The Excel file format is actually a zip archive of a bunch of XML and other files. That sounds like a really weird thing to say, but here's proof. Uh, I am going to come in here, and I'm going ch to change the extension on this file. So instead of XML, I'm going to change it to ZIP, a compressed folder. That's a really weird thing to do, just to change the extension of a file. It's so weird that when I do it, Windows is going to say, slow down, cowboy. That's a weird thing to do. If you change an extension, it might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Oh, I'm sure. So now it's a zip file. Now, under normal circumstances, you just say, oh, this just changes to say zip on the end, and you try to open it as a compressed folder, and what's going to happen? Yeah, it's not, it's not a compressed folder. 
ah, but this is a compressed folder. And so, you know, I could double click and go look on it, but I'm going to go ahead and just extract the whole thing. So I'm going to right click and say extract all. And the default place will be okay. And so now it has made for me this folder, Fallen Angel S6, Gov Allen. In fact, what I may do is just take my zip file. Now that I've extracted it, I don't need the zip file anymore. So I may just go ahead and turn that back into an XLSM. And I may turn down the volume. So now what we have is we have this this archive extracted. Mm, let me zoom in here. Windows Plus. So let's just kind of explore around here a little bit. So we've got a folder here called XL. And look, there's inside there's a folder called worksheets. There's only one worksheet in this workbook. Here it is, sheet one. It's an XML file, so you may or may not have a default XML reader. So I've got um, Visual Studio Code set up to read this. But here, oh, okay, better zoom out. So this is that workbook. Hmm, Alt-Z. So or that's that, this is that worksheet. And I should be able to find in here somewhere where, yeah, so here it is, range A1. Let me zoom in just a bit. Control plus. So it says uh, range A1 has a value of 10. It has that written right in it. Now, we had other stuff in here like, like Microsoft. Like we have those ticker symbols in here. Um, but if we look, no matter where we look through here, we're not going to see those particular strings. And the reason is, is that to be able to save space in this file, Microsoft says, look, strings can be long, and there are a lot of times they're duplicated. And so instead of actually putting those strings in, the, in each of the XML files, we're going to go put them in a common place. So we should go back and find something called shared strings. I don't really remember where that folder is. Or, oh, here it is, sharedstrings.xml. So I'll open up this file. Let's see. And then here are all the strings that are common throughout all the workbook. And then the other XML file just says consume these strings. And so it does that to be able to keep the data a little, uh, a little smaller. In fact, for that reason, if you have a database like in um, Access, and you like export that data into Excel, it's dramatically smaller in Excel just because the native format for Excel is this kind of compressed folder, and they do another level of compression even before it gets zipped. And so what do you think? Could we change this from Microsoft to something else and have it actually go back? Yeah, we could. I'll change that from Microsoft to uh, Google. And save. Now, ultimately, we're going to re-zip this back up, but this was just to show you this is the format of the Excel file. So strange as it may seem, if you ever found yourself somewhere on a computer and you needed to modify something in an Excel workbook and you didn't have Excel, you could extract it and do it this way. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure I would really recommend it, but that's possible. Okay. Um, but here is where we have to come to be able to do a ribbon modification. Now, I chose a workbook. I chose the, the um, Fallen Angel workbook because it already had a ribbon modification in it. You can start from scratch. You have to create a particular folder that's named just right. Inside that, you have to create a file that's named just right. And so rather than starting from scratch, let's take a look at this existing, at this existing um, ribbon customization. It is not inside the XL folder, so I have to go back up to the top. So we'll see right here that there's a custom UI folder, custom user interface. And so if we were to extract an Excel workbook that did not have a ribbon modification in it, this folder just would be absent. It's just, it's just not here. But because it's here, when this workbook loads, Excel goes, oh, look, there's a folder with custom 
UI. We better go find out what the customization is. And so let's go ahead and look inside the custom UI. And we've got uh, some images as well as the custom UI XML. That's the one we want to take a look at right now. So you'll need to open this with something that can edit. By the way, that tool that we uh, kind of talked about for today's homework to install, what that tool does, if you can get it to install, it's kind of nice because it just handles all of this unzipping, creating these files, editing them, and zipping them back up for you. So you open the workbook in that tool, and it will extract the file and, and build this, this file, or it'll extract the archive, build this file for you. And when you say save, it zips it all back up. So it just makes the housekeeping part of this uh, a lot smoother. Uh, the problem is it's now an outdated tool, and it won't install for probably about half of you unless you really jump through some hoops. So if you want to jump through the hoops, fine, but we can accomplish the same thing just by what we're doing here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the custom UI XML. And this, this is it. <sighs> Don't ever type this from scratch. There are lots of examples online. Find an example that's close to what you want and copy and paste. So here's what it says. We've got a custom UI tag. It ends with a slash custom UI tag down at the bottom. So these tags are all nested in that way. Inside the custom, the ribbon customization or the, the interface customization, we say we're modifying the ribbon. That suggests that there is some other part of the user interface that you can modify besides the ribbon. I don't know what that is. But the ribbon is what we're doing. In it. And it may be that there is nothing else, but that when they developed this, they thought maybe someday we'll want to make something besides the ribbon. And so we're setting it up so that we can extend it easily. Inside that ribbon, we're saying, OK, we've got a set of tabs. Here's a set of tabs. And now we are making a new tab. So here's, or here's, here's the part then that we're you know, really looking at. So if we look at that assignment, I may go ahead and go back and open that assignment again. Just so we can see the ribbon that's here. So there's a tab called Assignment. And if I come over here, I can see there's a tab here. It has an ID, tab assignment, and it has a label, assignment. The, the label is what shows up on the tab. The ID just has to be unique. I can't have any two IDs that are the same in this XML file. Um, do I do anything else with the ID? The answer is I can. It's possible for me to read from VBA the ID of the button that was pushed. And so it might be nice to be able to say, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to have some kind of general handler that processes, that runs every time you click a button, and then just do something different depending on the ID that was clicked. So we may see how to do that today, but that's, that's what the ID really is for. So you can tell what was clicked on. Now, tabs have built into them groups. Um, and so there's a group here called Show Instructions with one button in it, and then a couple with, with two, one called Automatic Scoring, one called Fallen Angel. And so if I come back here and look, I should be able to see the next level down from the tab. I've got a group here with a label of show instructions, a group here with a label of automatic scoring, and another group here with a label of fallen angels. So I can see those three groups then defined in here. I'm just going to change assignment on that. Whoops, I'll leave the tab as assignment. Thank goodness for undo. And I'm going to change the group label from show instructions to view instructions. All right. So let's then take a look at what this button, then I'm going to turn on the word wrap here. We'll take a look at what this button label then does. Now, all the other labels we've seen so far, they're container labels. They have other tag or, or they're container tags. They have other tags inside of them. The button is not. And so when we look at group, we see it has a, a, an opening tag and a slash group for the closing tag. But button is all by itself. And so it ends with, instead of just an angle bracket to end, it ends with a slash before that. That's the signal in XML when you say, don't expect to find a closing button tag because there's no closing tag. It's all just sitting right here as one tag. And then the attributes for this 
tag are what we're interested in seeing. So it has to have an ID. It has to have a label. Can you guess what the label is? Yeah, the label is just the text that shows. We then have two sizes that the button can be, large and normal. Those are two sizes, large and normal. Uh, we could change the size of this button by changing this from large to normal. Why don't we do that? Normal. Now, on action then becomes the name of the VBA subprocedure that we want to execute when this code executes. So that's what we're after. Uh, and then we have two different ways that we can put we have two different ways that we can put an image on this. One way is that there are a potload of images built into Microsoft Office. And if you know the ID of that image, you can just say use one of these built-in images. And that's what this is. So instead, if, in, instead of saying image, like down here, it says image. That's, a, that's my own specific file that I've added into this archive. But image SMO, SMO or MSO stands for Microsoft Office. This is just the identifier of an existing image that's a part of Office. And I'll show you where you can find out what those are. There was a question here in the back. Ah, the question is, is there uh, some attribute that says, hey, well, I'd like to see a drop-down menu here. And the answer is, buttons don't drop down, but there's a different kind of tag, not button. There's a drop-down tag. And so, yeah, you can make drop-downs. You can make check boxes. You can make little text boxes that you fill in right there in the ribbon. Um, that's all more complex than we're going to do today, but that's all possible. Um, and I will show you, like we'll show you right now. So if we go back to Learning Suite, there's some pretty good references for dealing with ribbon stuff, and I've given you some links to them. The main guy on the ribbon is a guy named Ron de Bruin. He's from the Netherlands. And so this site, Ron de Bruin's site on ribbon modification, is probably still the best, best place to go. In 2007, when they released this, this first way that you could modify the ribbon, there was, there was like, you could fit the documentation from Microsoft into a thimble. It was next to impossible to figure out how to do it. And this guy, Ron Bruin, figured it out and you know, put up a site that says, hey, here's how you do it. And he's done a really good job of keeping it updated over the years. So that, if you go there, it'll show you those, these, more, these more complex things about working with the ribbon. Uh, so, but then here's the next link here is image names. So I'm just going to follow that link. And this is actually just, this is a, a, um, a blog, a blogger blog that I put images of all of the buttons for the ribbon in. There's like, there, there are thousands of them. There's more than a thousand of them. And so each one of these is one of the images that you can use. Let me go to normal size. I think those are huge. Control minus. Same control minus, but it looks like it's getting bigger. I guess that's the native size. So, but you have to be able to get the ID. Well, each one of these is actually an image that I put onto Blogger, and so if you like right click and say download, save image as, is that here? Hmm. I don't think save link as will do it. Maybe I need to click on it. Ah, if I click on it, it will show me that image. There it is, tiny. Uh, and here I think I can right click and say save image as. Save image as, and then that is the file name is actually the name of the identifier for Microsoft. So what is this picture that we chose? Looks like a little spreadsheet. I'm going to go ahead and change that one to look like a spreadsheet. So I'll copy not the .png, but just the part, the part, the part before the .png. And by the way, if you open up like the information on this image, you can see the file name there as well. So there's two ways to get at that, at that image name. And so the idea on that blog is you can kind of just scroll through and see the image that you might be interested in, get the name of that image, and that's the name of the, uh, of the image MSO. So it's an, it's an identifier for an existing Microsoft Office image. And so instead of File Prepare Menu, I'm going to put in Access List Custom. And that should just change that from being whatever that first icon is in my ribbon from being this to being that thing that just looks like a spreadsheet. 
So we'll see that when we save it. Questions so far? How many of you are looking at this and going, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's what it takes to do the ribbon? Yeah, you should be. It's bizarre that this is what it takes to do. So that's the really bad news. This is really hard. What's the good news? Yeah, no one else knows how to do this. You know, when you, when you, when you, when you give a workbook to a colleague or to your boss that says, oh, you know what, I put some, some VBA sub-procedures in here and I give you a, you know, a ribbon up here just to be able to run them, they go, I had no idea that was even possible. They don't say that out loud. They pretend like they knew that all along. But they're, they're impressed, you know, because they've never seen anyone do that before. Now, it's possible uh, just through the interface to change the, to modify the ribbon on your instance of Excel. There's pretty good tools for that, but that's just for your copy of Excel. The, the, the change we're making now follows the workbook. And so that's, that's why it's great. So you can tie this into macros that are in the workbook, and then the ribbon goes with it wherever that workbook goes. So we're in the, we're in the custom ribbon folder, right? What if it doesn't have a already disposed? So yeah, the question here is, you know, if, if there was not already a, a ribbon customization here, that custom UI folder would not be here. And yeah, you'd have to get the folder in there, name it right. You'd have to have this file. What is this file called? Customui.xml. That would have to be in there and named just right. Yeah, don't, don't type that from scratch. You know, go look at one of, the, uh, one of your homework examples from this class, or go to the Rhonda Bruin site, and, and you'll, you'll see the code for that. Question? Yeah, the question is, well, once I have this thing unzipped, could I just copy, could I just drag this custom UI folder into another workbook and then and, and work from there? And the answer is yes, that's the whole idea. Yeah, that, that we'll, we'll, we, we may very well do that. Um, because the, the, we can't really get to the code on this workbook because the module's locked. It's got, it's got a password on it, which I'm not going to give you. Um, but but we'll, we'll do that very thing here shortly. Question? We're going to get there. Yeah. It, you, you zip it back up, but there's one little gotcha on, on zipping it up, but I'll show you. Okay, so we've made a couple of changes. Um, we can see, you know, so there's the button. We have just, and that's all this is, it's just buttons in groups. The one other thing that I want to point out here is that down here in my last group, I have some images that are not part of the custom, they're not part of, they're not images that exist in Microsoft Office. They're images that I brought in. And so in this case, we don't say image MSO, we say image, and then we put the name of an image. So let's go and, let's go and see where those are defined. I'm going to go ahead and save these changes. What changes did I make? It seems like I changed the name of a group, and I changed the, the size of a button, and I changed the image on a button. Actually, I think I changed the image on the one that I made really small, so I'm going to go undo that. So instead of making that one normal, let's see, I'm lost. Here's my ribbon line six. There it is. I'm going to make that back to large, and I'll make the next one over here normal. because I want to be able to see the image that we put on there. And we'll save that. All right, so if I wanted to drop in an image, I have to create a folder called images. And inside that folder, I will have uh, my named files. So clear and angel is the name of the file. And that's, 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 the, that's the image name that I put in there without the .png. You can do others, like JPG and, and others you can put there as well. Ah. Um, okay, but we could bring in other, other images, drop them in here, and they would then become available for us to, to use on the, on the ribbon. Now, uh, let me go ahead and open this. The size that you want these images to be is, I can't remember, but I think it's like 48 pixels square. Edit. I kind of want to just edit this. What's that going to open if I just say edit? I don't know. Hopefully it'll open in paint. Oh, good. Oh, no. This is paint.net. Anyway, there's the image. Oh, yeah. So it's down here. It tells us that's 48 pixels square. And so that's, that's the size that you're after, uh, at least for normal resolution. So I think that 
if you've got like a really high resolution screen and then you've, you've got things you know, made a little bit larger, you can do a little bit better. With, you can add several different sizes of the image and it'll pick the right one depending on what the resolution is. I've never done that before, but I've read about it. So that's, that's also, you can kind of go down that road. Okay, so we've made some changes here. I am going to um, go back to my ribbon folder. Okay, the temptation is to say, here's the folder that was created when I extracted. You'll say, ah, this is what I have to compress. I just want to rezip this folder. That's, that's not what you do. You have to go into this folder and you compress from this level. So instead of taking the folder that contains all the, the, the top level folder, you go into that top level folder and say, let's select all of these files. And we'll right click and say, send to compressed folder. And now it's made that folder. It's called custom UI.zip. It just picks, I think one of these files, probably depending on the order in which I selected them. I'm going to call this new ribbon. And instead of zip, what am I going to call it? XLSM. Make sure you want to change it. I am. And I'm actually, I'm also going to move it up a level. So let me cut it from here and go put it right back up here next to my other one. Now, the, the, as they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. We don't really say it. That's the, that's the real saying. How do we normally say it? Proof is in the pudding, which is a weird thing. Do you want to know where that expression comes from? In the 18th, uh, oddly enough, it comes from the 18th century. In the 18th century, um, uh, it was, plum pudding was like this great holiday treat, and it took a month to make it. So you start making the, the plum pudding in November so it's ready for your Christmas dinner. Um, it has to ferment and do all kinds of, I don't, know, I don't know what all it does, but it's a really weird thing. And so it's a, it's a big question. You know, did the pudding turn out? And, and what's the answer to that? The proof of the pudding is in the eating. You, you won't really know if that pudding is good until it's time to eat it. Anyway, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, or the proof of the ribbon is in the launching. So I am going to now try to open this. What's going to happen if I've messed up the XML? The workbook will still open, but the ribbon modification just won't be there. Ah, and because that assignment tab shows up, it lets me know I did everything just right. So I'll come to assignment. So here it says, instead of show instructions, it says view instructions. And there's the new icon. The submit button has been shrunk down because it's now normal instead of large. It'll fit three normal ones into the space of one large one. Uh, but there we go. So we're, we're able to successfully modify that particular ribbon. Questions? Yep. The question is, the order in which these ribbons and, or these groups and these buttons appear is determined by the order in which they are put in the XML? And the answer is yes. Just the order in which it reads that file is the way that they, is the way that they come in. Another question here? So the question is, can we set, so, so the, the kind of ribbon we're making now is a ribbon that follows the workbook. How can we make a ribbon that just opens and is here for whatever workbook is open? There's two ways to do that. Uh, and we'll cover, well, I'll, I will briefly show you one and then we'll cover the other one today. So the first one is, if, I'm just, if I just want to have this workbook uh, or, or modify my version of Excel, it's done right here. File options. Modify ribbon, customize ribbon. And so here is where I can, I can change. I can make a new tab right here. I can bring all whatever tools that are over here. I can bring them all in. There's even a way to say I want to bring in something and, and uh, run a macro. So here's a macro. My list of macros. Oh, didn't know there were so many macros. Probably here because we've got some add-ins plugged in. Um, but you can say, yeah, just bring over and, and run these. And if you do that, then you have modified this installation of Excel. And so if that's what you're after, that's how you do it. Now, another possibility is to say, I want to create a series of functions. I want to create some modules, and I don't want them to just follow that workbook around, but I want someone to say, I want to install 
these, these procedures that, I, that I've written, and I want to have a, a, a menu come along with that. What is that called? We can do that. What is that, what is that called when we do that? It's making an add-in, and we're going to cover making an add-in today. It is surprisingly simple. Um, but once, once you've made that as an add-in and they install the add-in, then any ribbon modification in the add-in becomes permanent as long as the, the add-in is installed. Oh, by the way, also notice we changed Microsoft to Goog here by editing the XML file as well. Question? Uh, so you could use Notepad without installing anything, um, but the one that I really recommend is Visual, Stu uh, Visual Studio Code. It is, in fact, the only micro program that was like written at Microsoft that I love. I love Excel. Was it written at Microsoft? It was purchased at Microsoft and developed. You know, Microsoft didn't start that. It wasn't their idea. They bought it from someone and said, you know, we'll, we'll move it forward. Um, this is one that actually started at Microsoft only a few years ago. Uh, and it's, it's now, it may very well be the most popular just code editor in the world. It's free. It's called VS, VS Code. If you Google VS Code, you can. In fact, if you had started Googling it when I first I said the name, you could probably have it installed by now. It installs very quickly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going. Yeah, good. Okay. So, um, I do want to have the experience of doing this from scratch. Meaning we start with a blank workbook and then copy over that existing one to modify. So let's just go ahead and, and, and do that to run through the experience. So I'll make a new workbook. You do have to have the workbook created already. Blank workbook. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it in that same location as my other workbook. So I'm going to uh, browse. I don't want to browse. I want to go to ribbon. And I will call this new ribbon one. Save. And I'm going to close it. Don't, don't try to unzip it while it's open. You, you might be able to do it, but you definitely don't want to be editing this while the thing is open. So we're going to close that new workbook. And it should show up here in my folder. So I've got new ribbon right here. I'm going to go through the same process. Right click, extract all. Oh, thank you. Oh, New Ribbon is the one that we just made. Thank you. Right click, extract, oh, and I got to rename. Won't let me extract until it thinks it's a zip file. You want to change it? Yes. I'll extract all. That's a great place to extract it. I'll go ahead and leave that window open, but come back to this one. And now I'm going to rename the zip file again back to an XLSM. Thank you. It's pretty bad that from the back of the room, you can see my screen better than I can see it. I'm right in front of it. Okay. So now I have this extracted workbook here. There's no custom UI folder. And so I'm just going to go into my Fallen Angel 1 folder. And I'm just going to drag the custom UI over. And that should bring in that, that whole ribbon modification. From here, you can start editing it, you know, as you might like to. But all I want to do now is zip it up and see if this in my new Ribbon 1 workbook now has that ribbon on it. So I'm going to select all of them here in the top level and send to. So I think the pictures are actually inside the custom UI folder. Yeah, so they're in here. So they're one level. That, that folder has it all. So right click, choose send to, compressed folder.
new ribbon two dot x. Ooh, I think I made this initially as an XLS X, didn't I? I didn't. I didn't save this as an XLS M, so I better name it as an XLS X. And I'll put it back here, here at the top level. So hopefully I can open new ribbon two, and it will. There's a problem with the content. Ooh. I wonder if I did save it. I did. Did I save? Anyone notice if I saved it as an XLSM? Moving unreadable content. Close. Say the question again. That was a recovery thing that just happened. And so yours, and I'm not sure what went wrong. So hmm, we could try it again, but a couple more things to, got a couple more things to show. Uh, did that work just clean for anybody without the, the pop-up? No. So I may have to revisit that and if so, we'll, we'll make a video um, to show you how to do that. Of course, that tool, if you got that tool to install, um, that will go through well. Okay, I think back in 2012, I thought, hey, this whole process of just extracting a workbook and manipulating these files, something that we should be able to do with VBA. And so back on Learning Suite, Uh, there's this file here called the Ribbon Wizard 2. I'm going to download that. I think I already have downloaded it. Uh, maybe not. And so this is a tool that I wrote for generating uh, ribbons onto workbooks. It is uh, a tool that I thought, I think I, I literally wrote this on one day, Martin Luther King Jr. Day in 2012. Like, I didn't have to come to work, and so, hmm, what will I do? I'll write, a, I'll write this workbook. Um, I was a little bit surprised to find out that it only works for about 80% of Excel installations, so this may or may not work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, I don't know why. If it does work for you, that's great. It does some kind of neat things. Let me just take you through this one, uh, then we'll see how to make add-ins. So I'm going to go ahead and close every other workbook before I open this one. I want to make sure that I'm kind of in control of what's happening with the workbooks that are here. So my idea here was to say, if we could just specify all the information we want for building the ribbon on an Excel sheet, then we could have a macro that goes through and, and generates the ribbon based on that. So un kind of surprisingly, I actually wrote some notes on how to use the thing. Here it is. But let me sh just show you how it works. Okay, so you can forget the instructions tab or you can read it sometime in the future. But what I've done is I said, listen, here's a tab, here's a, a worksheet tab where I specify the information for a tab on the ribbon that I'm going to create. And so um, we have a group name which will ultimately become the group name in the XML. We have an image here that we're specifying. Those images are literally just sitting here on this sheet. Those are not images that are saved somewhere else on the disk. They were just, these are just images on the sheet, and they are within the boundaries of the cell called image. So it's just a floating image that is positioned right there. So the location of that image is how it knows to bind on that image onto this particular button. We then have some text that we want to put on that button. So that's the text that we saw before. Uh, the size of the button, and then the identifier. You've got to have an ID for that. So this is all just the information that we're going to push into the Excel workbook. Now, here's some sub-procedures that I have kind of pre-written here that will allow you to get the code into the workbook to tie onto these buttons. Uh, but we'll see that here in just a minute. This, this tool cannot push the code into your workbook, but at least it has it here. So this will create a tab called information. It's reading the name of the tab to create off the name of the sheet. 
So if we were to create a new sheet, and whatever name we put on the sheet, that would be the name of the tab that we're getting ready to generate. Um, now here's a data tab. Um, what's, that should alert you, that should alarm you immediately. Why? There's already a tab named data. And so if the name of the tab we put down here matches an existing name of the tab in the ribbon, instead of making a new tab, it will just add whatever you put here on the end of that tab. And so it will, it will, it will put these tools onto the, the data tab. So this is just a row highlighting function. So buttons you can click to highlight the row that you're on. Uh, you might not be surprised to find out there's a ribbon that runs all of this. So it's called Ribbon Foundry. Some instructions that will just show that first sheet. Uh, some samples. The truth is, I don't remember what this does. Uh, validate, just to make sure you're all, you don't have any duplications in your, in your IDs across the whole sheet. Select sheets let you just say which sheets you want to include. So you could have lots of different ribbon modifications in this book and say, I want to push these onto a workbook, and you just select the ones that you want. And I think it actually just does it by the color. It just ends up setting the color of the, of the tab. Uh, and then here's the one, create ribbon. Oh, but before we can create the ribbon, we have to have a workbook open that we're going to push the ribbon onto. So let me make a new workbook. And I've got to save it as an XLSM file. If it's not an XLSM file, it says it won't even try to use it. So I'll call this Ribbon Wizard. Ribbon Wizard New. And XLSM. And I will go back to my Ribbon Wizard. So now I'll say create ribbon, and it should look around and find all the workbooks that it could possibly put the ribbon onto. And here it is, Ribbon Wizard New, the one I just created. And I'll say insert ribbon. This will then go through that process that we just did by hand. It'll make a copy of the workbook, it'll extract it, it'll build the files that it needs to build, it'll actually export those images into those the proper place and then bring it up here. And so here is the information tab on my newly created ribbon. So ribbon wizard new, and these are those buttons that we created. Now, there's no code behind any of these yet. So I try to click one of these, and it'll say cannot run the macro, and here's the name of the macro. It may not be available. It doesn't know why it can't run it. It just knows it's not able to run. Okay, so for those of you... Um, if you were trying to follow that example along, raise your hand so I can see how many we're starting with. Now, if that w keep them up. If that worked for you, keep your hand up. It looks like it worked for almost everyone. If, it, if you tried but it didn't work, put your hand up. Let me just see. Just a couple of you over there. What version of Excel? Just 2016? And 365 or just 2016? Not sure. Did you install it through BYU? So it's, uh, it's 365. So yeah, so a couple of us that didn't work for it, I don't know why. Truth is, maybe we could track it down, but it's no longer Martin Luther King Jr. Day 2012, which is when I did this work. So, Okay, so our next step to understand is that we have to get VBA sub-procedures placed into this workbook. So I'm going to come back over here to the ribbon wizard. Oh, and by the way, let's also look here on the data tab. All the way over here at the right is a new group, this row highlighting group that will just try to highlight the row, but there's no code behind any of these buttons yet. So let's just edit. So this, it didn't generate these. Um, let's do, I'm going to do information first. But these are actually the, the VBA sub procedures just written in text that will do this. So I'm going to copy these. This copy code stubs is supposed to copy this in a way that I can paste it straight in. But every time I've tried to copy that late, lately, it just it doesn't actually copy it. So I'm not sure what's, what's gone haywire there. But I can just copy those now and then come over to my workbook that has my ribbon on it, information ribbon, and open up my code editor. Got to make sure that I'm on the right one, ribbon wizard new, and I will insert a module. 
Well, unfortunately, because there are carriage returns inside those cells, when I paste this, it's going to put quotes where it doesn't belong. It's putting quotes around every cell that was there. So I'm just going to do a find and replace to get rid of those. So anyway, that starts with quote sub. I'm just going to change it to sub, replace all. And anything that is sub quote, I want to replace with sub, replace all. And that should get that code working. Oops. Oh, and then I've got to change double quotes to single quotes. It did that as well for me. And so now I've got valid code. We'll take a look at this in a minute. Let's just make sure that it works and I've got a question to address. So it should be able to come here and just say we're inserting a random integer between uh, random integer between 1 and 0. That should be an interesting thing. How about random integer between 1 and 6? So this is like a roll of a die. Uh, here's decimal, random number between. So it's actually now executing that code. Question? Oh, so the question is... So I think, I'm not positive, but I think that, that my tool will do that. If you just go and say, oh, I don't want to include this sheet, at, uh, this, this tab at all, I would just change for which sheets are selected, unselect information, and then process this again, and it will just... I, I think it really does blow away any ribbon modification that's there and push this one into it. Um, it's been a while since I wrote it. Um, so that's there. All right, one more thing that I want to look at here, and then we'll take a look at add-ins. And that is, it, this is not just a sub-procedure. The sub-procedure is going to have a parameter passed to it. So when, when you click on that button in the ribbon, Excel is going to call a sub-procedure, but it's also passing a parameter to it. So you have to receive that parameter. And it is just the variable name is arbitrary. You can call it whatever you want. And the type, it's an object type. If you call it an iRibbon control, then you'll get IntelliSense help in here. But you could just call it as an object or as a variant. That would be okay. So any name as variant will let those functions be called. But now I could do this, debug.print control dot and then there's not a whole lot available but I can get the ID and so I'll be able to see when I click on that very first one which does the local time it should also into the immediate window put the ID of that control so let me come back to my workbook local time plugs in the local time and it was called BTN local time so you have access to that. And if you're doing something more complex, that it deals with drop-down lists um, or checkboxes, then you'll have a hook back into that control that you could read or modify. And so that's all available. It is no small learning curve to do those more complex things, which is why we just don't do it in this class. This is enough to get you introduced to what it takes. Um, and it's probably 99% of what I have ever done in the ribbon is just put a button to run some VBA code. But I've been down that other road a couple of times, and you can do great things. Okay, questions? Um, let's go ahead, then, and see what does it take to build an add-in. Let's suppose that I want to have my information add-in. I can install that, and then regardless of whatever workbook is open, I want this information tab to be there so that I can roll a dice uh, or, or roll a die or you know, choose some random numbers. Here's how we do it. File. This is the workbook. It's got my code in it. It's got my ribbon modification. This is everything I want to have for my add-in. I choose File, Save As. And there's lots of different formats you can use to save this workbook. We've only so far ever used XLSM. Uh, there's XLSB. What is that? It's actually a binary format. It's one you can't unzip to go snooping around in it, but it has all the rest of the stuff, all the rest of the features. It's just a different format. 
um, uh, old XLS 97 format. But the one we're after is the XLAM extension. Where is it? Excel add an XLAM. Here it is. Now, when I, when I do the save as, it says, great, you're going to save this as an add-in. It's trying to put it with all the rest of my add-ins on this machine. I don't want to do that. I'm going to put it in my normal place. So I'm going to browse. Just click up here and, and go find my other place, which was in my downloads. And downloads ribbon. And you'll notice that it's saving it as an XLAM. A couple of things are going to be interesting here. So I'll go ahead and save that, and it will generate that file XLAM. I'll save that. But now, if I look up here at this file name, it is still an XLSM. The reason is the XLAM is not an editable format. It's a publishing format. So I have my XLSM here, and I push it out as an XLAM, but I'm, I'm not editing that XL. You don't edit XLAMs. You just convert an XLSM to an XLAM. That is now, it's now an add-in. I'm going to close this one. I don't want to be confused with the source code and the add-in open at the same time. Oh, I'll save that. That sounds great. Ribbon Wizard may have been changed by another, I don't know, save a copy. That was kind of surprising. Copy of, that's fine. I'm not even planning to come back to it today. Okay, so now add, I'm just going to install that add-in. File, Options. Options, add in, second to the last option over here on the left. Add ins. And then down here, manage Excel add ins. I'll click on go. Um, okay, and then here's, I can browse for a new add in right here. I choose browse, and I got to go find that add in, which was in my downloads. Come over to Ribbon, and there's my Ribbon Wizard XLAM. Say OK. And now here it is, Ribbon Wizard New. Say OK, and now there's that information tab, um, and that will be open regardless of which workbook is open. So let me close this. Don't save the changes to this. Uh, no workbook is open, and my, my ribbon is here. I'm guessing this will be an error because it assumes it can write to the active cell. Yeah. So I'll open a new workbook. Ribbon is st still there because it's an add-in. It's an installed add-in. And now I should be able to drop in whatever we're doing. What is this? Number of minutes to go until 5 o'clock? 25 minutes until 5 p.m., in case you're watching the clock. There's a button just for that. <laughs> um, so what this lets you do is it lets you say, I've got this functionality that I want to share with someone else. Make it as an XLAM. Get that file into their hands. They can install it into their Excel, their, their, their version of Excel, and they've got that functionality. The worksheets that were part of that, they're here. Those worksheets are here. They're just not visible, and there's no way to make them visible. They're there for you to work with in your code. So, you, so those worksheets are still there. You can still manipulate those worksheets. You could copy those worksheets and make new worksheets out of them. So you could have some templates in there and generate new, f new sheets. Um, all pretty straightforward. Questions? Oh, so you're talking about the tool, the, 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 the ribbon wizard. Um, yeah, so the question is, let me get it back up so I can talk about the question and, and show. Um, Alt-FR, there we go. The ribbon wizard. I guess I called it the ribbon foundry first. 
Right, so the, the, whole I, the whole idea here is that you could copy one of these sheets and build your own from scratch. You could add another line down here, and when you generated the, the ribbon, it would generate whatever you specified here. As many lines as you create, and if you've got you know, different groups specified in here, it'll make the different groups and put your buttons in those different groups. And yeah, that's the whole point here is not to show you, oh, this makes this ribbon. Um, it's that you could specify this however you want and make whatever ribbon you want. But it is limited just to, just to buttons. It's not going to do anything with drop-down lists or anything else. Other questions? Let me go ahead and take you through that one other tool that I said is kind of tough to install because if you get it installed or it installs easily for you, um, it is kind of nice to see. So I am going to just try to, oh, I hope I have it installed here. If not, we'll try to install it. Mm. That probably won't go so well. Um, looks like don't have it installed. So that means we won't put it on the video. But uh, you got it installed? Why don't you bring your computer here and, and uh, let, me, let me present from that. So that'll be it for the video for today.